Hey, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for coming on to Birth Your Vision Podcast Live. I'm the founder of All Women's Network and also the founder of Birth Your Vision Podcast Live. I am a passionate person. I'm passionate about helping women in business and especially female entrepreneurs who struggle with self-doubt and lack of confidence. And so, you know, I'm able to help and support them to actually birth their visions. Um, I'm a multi-award winning entrepreneur. I'm a mentor, a trainer, a coach, and also a podcaster and a transformational speaker. Um, for those of you who are watching me for the first time, I want to say welcome to Birth Your Vision Podcast Live. It's a pleasure to have you here. Um, I'm really, really excited. Please let me know where you are watching me from and also let me know how your day has been. And so the podcast is really about, you know, helping women and giving them support. You know, women in business, aspiring female entrepreneurs, you know, trying to get them to actually start their business. And, you know, this podcast helps them to get inspiration, advice, support and tips in growing and starting their business and also is a platform to actually help women to get visibility. So every week I will um, shine a spotlight on an amazing female guest who will be joining me and also sharing about how they've been able to turn a simple idea to a profitable making business. Um, they'll be able to share their journey and also their success stories. So today I am so excited to have an amazing guest. Her name is Michelle and she's going to be telling us all about um, a whole experience in regards to um, business um, events, business industry. But just before that, I want to actually share one minute of um, inspiration. So my one minute of inspiration today, you know, the motivational boost is to actually um, let you know that you can actually start for from anywhere you are in your life at this moment. So if you're thinking of starting a business or you're thinking of actually writing a book or you're actually thinking about doing a podcast, well, you have the opportunity to do so. There's never been a better time to do that. So I just want to encourage you today, to encourage you to actually start because the moment you start, the ideas will start to flow. The confidence will start to build up. So it's important that the first step you take when it comes to you having so much ideas in your head, it's just about writing it down and just getting started. I myself used to actually um, have a little bit of low self-esteem and lack of confidence, but I've actually um, started getting out of my comfort zone and doing the things that I wouldn't really normally do. So I had to start and here I am today. And I just want to encourage someone who's watching today it's time for you to birth that vision. It's time for you to actually, you know, start becoming your own self and really come out of your shell because the world is waiting for you. So I hope that you are feeling encouraged today and just stay on as I'm about to introduce my wonderful guest, Michelle Fanis, an amazing, amazing woman. She is so experienced in um, markets research and also helping to organize fantastic major conferences and just before i welcome her i just want to say thank you so much to all the amazing guests for join for jumping on today thank you for coming on to the birth your vision podcast live it's amazing to have you here so thank you so make sure you leave your comments your thoughts and your ideas in the comment sections if you have any question for me and my guest please do let us know so now i'm going to invite my wonderful guest Beautiful Michelle Fanes, thank you so much for coming on. It's a pleasure to have you here today. You are amazing. Thank you so much. How are you amazing. doing today? Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> what a fantastic uh, opening. Very thank motivating. You so, much. so I just wanted to let people know um, exactly um, you know, your background and what you've actually done within the period of 20 years. And it's really so commendable. Um, so my guest today, Michelle Fanis Hill, has 20 years event design and project delivery experience, starting her career with um, UBM and informs with clients such as Economists, Nursing Times and African Farming Magazines and many, many more. She is a member of Meetings Professional International and lectures on events management at the University of West London and also Anglia Ruskin University and King's College, um, teaching over 200 students on private diploma and degree courses. 
She has worked with global corporates, celebrities, governments, ministers, and key pioneers in different fields. Um, she has published an amazing book, and also she has designed and delivered events all over the world. Wait till you hear an amazing, um, great thing that she's going to be doing in 2021. So that's my wonderful guest for you there. So welcome, Queen. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Amazing. <laughs> Feeling great. <laughs> Happy to be here. Blessed. <laughs> thank you so much. It's always a pleasure having, um, you know, so many wonderful guests globally and from around the world. And it's a real pleasure to welcome you here today. Um, you know, just looking at your bio, I was just absolutely just blown away. Um, you know, 20 years in the event industry and you've worked with so many people. We're talking about high caliber of people, the government, celebra celebrities, and you've worked not just in London, but, you know, across the world. And I know that you have something amazing coming up in 2021. And I just want to commend you for all the wonderful things that you've been doing and you've actually achieved within that sort of 20 years um, journey. So, you know, let's go back to when you started. What was it for you that you felt that you know what I want to actually go into the event industry you know what inspired you to actually get started really well I'd love to sit here and say that I always <laughs> dreamed to be an event manager but I didn't even know what that was 20 right. years ago um, it's such a new career mm. so I fell into it actually I did um uh, I had a chemistry degree, funnily enough, that's another thing. I've got a chemistry degree and um, did a few things, recruitment, accounts, marketing, different things from graduating and was trying to find myself. Um, and actually, I wrote down all of the things that I wanted from a career. I actually okay. did it, the flip flipped it instead of looking for a career I wrote down what I wanted from a career all the criteria I wanted to travel I wanted to meet amazing people I wanted something that was intellectually challenging somewhere I could start my own uh, business and I found a job in uh, the Guardian it was for a conference producer yeah I, it ticked all my boxes I applied for it uh, got it and it's for a small conference company basically Fantastic. and that's how I started my uh, career working for a small niche conference company in the telecoms and pharmaceutical sector um, mm. developing conference programs approaching speakers research so the skill set that I've developed to, to today that's what I've been doing for the last 20 years and then yeah just went from mm. there and, were, and my last job was working for UBM uh, so I the, the, went into the corporate space, uh, large scale conferences, multiple stakeholders, much more complex. So, yes. yeah, I can imagine that is amazing. So you actually wrote things down as to what you wanted. Yes, I did. Yeah, I wanted I just did a whole life audit. Basically, I was yeah. a little bit. Um, I wouldn't say lost, but I would say I was a little bit out of focus. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I needed to sort of pause, a bit like what we've done this year, really, with the lockdown, yeah. uh, put, pressing the pause button, um, figuring out what skills I have, what I enjoy, what I don't enjoy, what I'm good at, um, where I want to go with my life. I was 28. So I felt that, you know, it was a milestone birthday coming up and I wanted to reset my my life goals and, and think about my direction. I just wanted a really dynamic career and that's what I got. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I love the way you said dynamic because actually the next question is about um, your event business. It was called um, Dynamic Events. It was, <laughs> yeah, and that's why. Previously, yeah. <laughs> yeah, previously. And um, I love the way you've actually used the word dynamic because you now kind of rebranded and you changed the name. Yes, Could you tell us the reason behind that? Yeah, so I mean, like anything, I mean, that name served me. It was the beginning, you know, I wanted to be, create a dynamic uh, event business, which I've done, I did. You know, I, I feel that my legacy is to uh, deliver events that are exciting, compelling, interesting. So, you know, the, the name encapsulated my service. But um, I felt that, um, that, that, that the word events, 
because our, our industry has developed so much. I was yeah. getting lost in um, in the magmire of new suppliers coming in, you know, wedding planners, um, venue uh, designers and um, people like that. So, I, and, and sort of audio visual people that have, you know, events in their kind of company title. So I, was, I felt I was getting a bit lost. There was a bit of confusion around what I did and what I offered. So I needed to just really clarify what it is that I offer and the conference director was there as the name mm, so. absolutely. <laughs> talking about <laughs> and I really like the name actually it's very um should I say very unique very posh it's got like a little bit of an edge to it I do like <laughs> it. um so talking about conferences and what and your and your business so what sort of services do you actually offer if you can actually break it down for us, what service do you offer? What products do you also offer your clients as well? Okay, so I offer a strategic thinking, okay. visionary uh, direction for clients. So for example, I'm working on a proposal at the moment for a company that wants to launch its first event as yeah. part of a new brand. So mm -hmm. they want some guidance on keeping them, keep keeping them close to their vision and their unique selling points um, and their value proposition and, and keeping that all sort of tight, um, but crafting it first. Um, so my job is, well, I've positioned myself as being able to carve out what an event would look, feel and be Yes. that is attached to a wider brand mm, that's absolutely my 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 work um so yeah I, I help clients to design and deliver events that are fitting with their brand and want to um you know attract a certain client it really does depend because as you know you're in events events have multiple yeah. um they have multiple purposes yeah. so it's That's about right. working out w w what is the purpose is it lead generation is, is it an, an exhibition is it yes. branding is it uh, brand activation is it sales yeah is it pr what is it so it's getting clear about uh first of all what the event wants what you want to use the event for and what's its purpose yeah. and how it fits into the wider strategy so, so I do that, and then there's also sort of mentoring uh, and 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 development of junior staff. I'm very passionate about that because that comes from my uh, my teaching and my lecturing. So I offer that as a service to some clients as well. So mentoring and developing junior staff so they get up to speed um, to be able to sort of meet with the with the objectives of the business, um, and then also um, there's my my grassroots services is research so um so if a client has an event that they already run and they may be like typical scenario is it's a conference that's been going for a couple of years maybe four or five years lost their way a little bit maybe declining in numbers each year and lost their way a little bit haven't really kept up to date with the market so they need to sort of get get to connect back with that market and work out yeah. where that market's gone and why is it that they're not attending the event anymore so I'll do that sort of piece of research which is um, what we call uh, qualitative and quantitative research to understand what's going on and what the event needs to become um, in order to get that audience back Fantastic. So, so research is also a large part of what yeah. I do as well yeah. Absolutely, and I think, research essentially is what I, I offer. Yeah. I do do the sort of delivery, the hands-on stuff as well. Um, you know, that's all part of the excitement. That's the best part in being yeah. at the event and delivering it. But um, I, where I probably differ to most probably event companies is I getting getting very early. I'm at very early stages with that decision making. So it's not just about the management of the event; it's actually about the design of the event beforehand yeah absolutely indeed yeah. i definitely agree i think a lot of research needs to go into it in terms of how come um you know a setting client may have kind of lost some of their audience yes. um and i think sometimes um we have to look at the marketing strategy um we have to look at how they're branding all those things really matters and um you know i understand how your um business works in terms of helping them to actually get back those audience and so that they could actually have a nice smooth running of their 
of their events, which sounds amazing. So who are your ideal clients? So for example, let's have a little small case study. So if I was to come to you and I wanted you to help me, um, you know, take my event online, virtual event, mm -hmm. um, am I your ideal client? Is that possible? Yes, of course. Yes, I yes. mean, um, so, so the shift from uh, live events to virtual, yeah, it's a strategic thing. Not yes. everybody wants to do that. So it's about whether your audience is online or not, whether they want to be online, because we, I've had, you know, I've, through, through the last seven months, I've attended quite a lot of different industry um webinars where you know some markets just won't work you know online events don't work you, you, oh. just, you know what I mean so it does depend on the marketplace you know um type of product what you're trying to convey formats mm. all of that but yeah most events can or a version can be delivered online it may not yes. be able to do the whole thing but there may be elements of it that you can deliver online because it's a whole piece strategy not That's everything cool. needs to be mm -hmm. as an event it can be other kind of avenues that you use to deliver the message not necessarily an event absolutely so. indeed i mean look at um looking back at sort of 20 years in terms of um you know coming from that business um event industry um what have you particularly enjoyed when it comes to events because it's a lot of work yeah there's a lot, is a lot of, of work research. there's a lot of research <laughs> that goes into it you do get overwhelmed and sometimes you do feel a little bit you know exhausted with and you know burn out but because of a certain element of it you know maybe it's it's about meeting people it's about um hearing the success stories at the end um mm. it's about the reward what is it particularly that you have actually sort of enjoyed within that sort of 20 year span is there anything particular oh there are a few things for different reasons yeah. i love being at the event i think that the whole it's a little bit like um <clears throat> devising a writing a song or creating a piece of art and then actually seeing that event play out that's yeah. how i see events that you know the whole delivery of it is what you crafted so yeah. I, I i really love seeing that hmm. i actually really enjoy the creative process the creative right. process of the idea the hmm. from the idea i really 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 enjoy that because it's a different experience Absolutely, um, for every event, um, and I really enjoy that. That keeps me fresh. It keeps me motivated. I have no idea what I'm going to produce or what it's going to look <laughs> like. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy that. It keeps because it's the cre it's a creative, innovative process. So Absolutely. I really enjoy that. Yeah, yeah. I love the end game with the mm. event at the end and people coming up to me and speakers saying, "Gosh, that was amazing!" and the 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 actual experience people have enjoyed and the the takeaways of are uh, what I anticipated the takeaways would be that's yeah. very empowering um, and it also um, affirms what I thought the event should deliver and then when you know participants or attendees come back to me and give me wonderful feedback that is that is fantastic but i really yeah. enjoy the creative process so i love the the idea generation process yeah fantastic i mean from your experience what would you actually um classify as a successful event so you know what are some of the ways you measure event success really okay <laughs> yes so that's always a really brilliant question because success is always measured by what you measure it's about what how you set out what your aims and objectives are so if your objective is to um cover your costs and generate 30 percent increase of of your database uh, so in other words lead generation then that's the success but if it's about um a brand activation so it's more about engagement of a new audience or yeah. um, launching into a new region a new geography um, and then having a piece of 
uh, PR or an article written about the product or the event, then that's also a success as well. It really does depend on, it always comes back to the aims and objectives. So for me, my own personal success, I'll give you two different examples and you, you'll see what I mean. So it, quite early in my career, I did a conference on um, natural products for um, using the sort of uh, materials in, in the in the ocean to develop um, sort of therapeutic drugs. And um, there's only something like, it's a very, very nice, really, really tiny niche market. Um, and there's only probably about maybe three or 400 people worldwide at the time. And I did a, a, co a conference um, after doing quite a lot of research, really got under, underneath the industry, really understood it, made some really good connections and built rapport with people quite quickly. Yeah. And then realized that actually it was very timely. And if we did it now, it would really work. So we did it in London. We got something like 108 people, 110 people to the event, which was about 40% of the, the, the whole market size international purely global and for yeah. me that was a success because um because of the the the, the and, and also my um my my bosses were very happy as well because it was a launch event and it went yeah. very very well it got some great uh, pr um and also it made their mark in that sector and in that industry as well so mm. it's only a small event it's sort of 100 people but it was the quality of the people that were there um yeah. and also the timeliness of as well of, of what it delivered and who it delivered who it delivered for oh. um so yeah and then another example is i do yoga i do retreats because i have a an online video yoga business and out of that um i did i design um wellness retreats for um yeah for for women usually <laughs> we, we do have a few men now. <laughs> and so we, we did, for women, isn't it <laughs> yeah we did a, a a um a first retreat to tuscany last year with one of my favorite yoga teachers and yeah we got 24 people amazing we had such good feedback people absolutely loved it um it's a different event you know but it's it was it's something i designed from scratch um yeah. just from understanding what i would want from a retreat um and then also using my organizing skills knowing what people like uh, how you know the convenience little things like gifts and um, transfers from the airport, just small things like that, all yeah. included to make it really easy for people to buy, basically. Um, it was a no-brainer. We have got waiting lists for this year. And, yeah, so for me, that, that again, is um, is success. Fantastic. Yeah. I just make people that. happy. Yeah, make people wonderful. Happy. Absolutely, you're right. I mean, talking about events, when it comes to finding a venue, this is something that many people actually find a little bit challenging. Um, yeah. You know, trying to negotiate the price, trying yeah. to find the right location for the audience so that it's a bit sort of um, not too far. Okay. So, you know, when it comes to that sort of looking for events, what factors do you actually consider when choosing uh, an event for a, a venue for an event? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So it's all again when looking for a venue. Um, I, I teach this quite a lot and uh, on the degree courses, and it's always something that the students are always like, "Well, how do you do that? And why? You know, how do you arrive at the right the right venue?" So yeah. the idea is to. It's always back to what you. Um, set as a criteria you have to create a criteria a list of criteria yes, what absolutely. are the deal breakers and what what are the must-haves and need to have and what are the nice to haves so does it need to be in the center of town so it's accessible or does it need to be in a rural location with a, with car parking so people can arrive and, and leave by car so things like that get really nail what's important in terms of 
A, accessibility, that's the first thing, you know, where does it need to be? Does Absolutely. it need to be a central London location, a, a rural location, a, a edge of the city, not edge of the city, what? What does it need to be and where does it need to be? Um, and then you also need to think about, is it a region, you know, also think about the audience. Where's the audience coming yeah. from? Are they coming on foot? Are they local? Uh, are they? Do they need to travel in from somewhere? Are they arriving by car, train? Are they flying in? you know so things like that you know does it make sense to have a hotel that's next to Heathrow Airport they might be busy chief executives tight on time it's an in and out job so it's things like that just just make mm. it easy yeah Absolutely, make it easy. Yeah. think about the audience so it's not a deterrent you definitely do not want people thinking oh I'd love to go to that event but goodness why is it there <laughs> Why have I got to drive for two hours to get there? You know, so do you know what I mean? So yeah. make it mm. easy for people. So location's absolutely key. Um, yeah. And then also what I say to students as well is, you know, it, it, the criteria is always determined by the owner of the event. So that might be internal clients. It might yeah. be uh, your boss or whatever. And you need to get that information from them. Is it mm. absolutely necessary that it needs to be a five-star hotel? Yeah. Or, or not? Or can it be a conference centre? Does it matter in terms of what it is? Or do you have the creative um, licence, actually, to just throw in all sorts of different options? Because that's the fun bit, isn't it? Where you yeah. can actually give lots of different types of options that, mm -hmm. that actually suit. Um, and then all, what I do with clients is give them lots of different options and they go, oh, I hadn't thought of that. You know, <laughs> I hadn't thought of having, you know, my venue in, I don't know, a gallery. Do you see yeah. what I mean? So, yes, yeah. so it, but it's all part of the creative process. What 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 does what 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 is it that you want the event to be or be look feel wow. experience and then you work back from that in terms of venues and then you create a long list which is probably about maybe six seven um venues on that list that fit all your criteria uh pick two or three that you want to visit don't visit them all because that'll take you <laughs> ages uh mm -hmm. do a short list down to about two or three visit all three and uh -huh. then when you can decide you'll know when you arrive which one you 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 are drawn to which one fits fits the event look feel de de decor everything mm. you'll, you'll 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 feel it in terms of being the right thing for the event depending Indeed. on what kind of atmosphere you want to create absolutely yeah definitely you've definitely executed that question really well it's just about looking at what does your event look like having a vision of where you want it to be it's and that would actually yeah to look for a nice yeah venue. so the, to, for example for our, our our retreat in tuscany we you know uh, when you're looking for a retreat i mean venue is is everything isn't it because people yeah. are going to relax you know it's not a, 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 a you know a city center trip a retreat you know it's remote if it, it could be as remote as you like you know Absolutely. so this is a, a, a um 18th century convert um refurbished villa in yeah. tuscany and it's, it's absolutely mouth watering ringly beautiful when i looked at the pictures i just thought gosh the i've got to see it in person and that's kind of the, <laughs> the effect that you want to have really yeah. for a venue to really feel like wow you know <laughs> absolutely i mean i've been to some amazing events and um as soon as i step into that venue i was just blown away the decor you know the food the speed mm -hmm everything was just on point so I think it's really really vital to ensure that you have a, a good vision of what you want when it comes yes. to event planning and yeah. uh, it's really good that you also help with that aspects of event planning which is um, an amazing thing as well um, so you know in terms of um, pivoting this is the most popular word used in 2020 <laughs> I feel what is your <laughs> take on that pivot everywhere pivot 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 <laughs> So, um, you know, what, what has it been like for you, obviously? Um, I know that the event industry, um, they had actually been hit quite hard in 2020 yeah. and um, with lots of events being cancelled from weddings to, you yeah. know, different types of special occasion events. 
um, you know, what has it been like for you? How did you pivot your event business um, during this season? If you can actually share some form of strategies or tools really that you've actually used um, okay. to pivot. Yeah, that would be really great. Okay, so I think I started with myself yeah. um, because we were all so busy. Um, mm. I actually took the opportunity to, because uh, I'm spiritual, so I took the opportunity and I thought, you know what, this is happening worldwide. Mm. There's something that we all need to do. And that's actually slowed down. We, we all needed to really slow down and uh, pause, press the pause button. So I pressed the pause button actually for the first uh, maybe six, eight, maybe t 12 weeks. Yes. I got into my gardening because that was sort of uh, the grown green fingers over <laughs> the last few months. Um, and really slow. I really, really slowed down. I mean, I was teaching. I was very fortunate at the beginning of the lockdown because um, I was teaching. So I had that income coming through. But I felt the effects of the, the lockdown before the actual lockdown because I had events in those first few months that clients decided to cancel so i felt yeah. the impact of the of the lockdown before it actually happened mm. um and then that's when i thought you know what now is actually a time a time to review so i hadn't actually planned on pivoting and rebranding but that's what actually happened because i paused i um had a rethink i reviewed my business where i was where i wanted to go my goals, my client base, my services. I just paused and reviewed everything. I did what I did when I when I first started the career. I did that reset and, and review uh, that whole thing. I, I guess that's a, an ongoing theme with entrepreneurs. We do do that quite a lot, don't we? We, re we review, we measure yes. um, and we reset as to, you know, how well did we do? Where are we going? Um, are, is what we're doing now serving us? So I knew that my current business was not going to take me where I needed to go in terms of revenue, uh, goals, in terms of clients that I wanted. I knew with the identity that I had, yeah. I wasn't going to be seen. I needed to sort of change the look and feel of my business and my service and needed to just uh, polish up. Yeah, I needed to polish up. So um, I sort of arrived at that and thought, well, what does that even look like? I don't even know. Um, so I just started writing. I started writing. I've always written for the industry and always been invited to comment for conference news and, you know, built up a very, starting to build up a very nice relationship with the editors in my industry. Um, but wanted to really take that to another level. Um, so I actually got a, an article published in Conference and Meetings World this year. So I was really pleased about that. And that was all about, um, actually, that's something your viewers can actually uh, can, can get from my website. That's it. So it's a review of all of the virtual platforms. Um, it was at the beginning of the lockdown. There have been so many more added now um, of all the different virtual and event management software platforms there was a comparison of that of them on a tape on a on a table and it was that that was published in conference and meetings well so the articles on my website and okay. the table is also on my website so you can take a look so at i'm going to leave the link to your website that, the yeah website. and have a look and have that so it was that website that I, that was that article that i got published and yeah, I just decided to write and I wrote on LinkedIn. My posts were very well received because I talked a lot about community development and the, the, the need to move away from transactional events management, just the event as a standalone, just for the sake of it, um, mm -hmm. just because we can, but being making the event as part of a wider strategy. So yeah. it's that thinking that helped to sort of shape my, my rebrand. Because I, I think events form, uh, they're not a standalone, they're part of a wider marketing, PR and communication strategy. Absolutely. And they, 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 are part of, they are part of that. They're not, they're not a standalone. They shouldn't be done in isolation. Indeed. Absolutely. And, you know, something that you mentioned, you were actually still, you know, doing what you were doing in terms of lecturing in university and teaching. Yeah. And, and that's really amazing because... You know, before we even started, just before we, we, we went live, we were talking about passive income. Yeah. And um, it's almost like you had set yourself up, 
do you know what I mean? Um, you didn't really know about this lockdown. Nobody knew about it, but you had a backup, Michelle. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah I know, so, yeah, you say, sorry, let me f let you finish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's like you have to have multiple streams of income. Would you agree? You, yes, because most definitely. This is something that nobody expected. Nobody anticipated the lockdown. And um, many people have actually struggled in this season because there is another alternative income coming in but you quickly pivoted by by you know understanding you know you've already got something else you know along mm -hmm. the side of running your business mm -hmm. and so that's one of the top strategies i guess in terms of not just focusing on one thing but maybe have something else like a side hustle definitely to actually, yeah to actually yeah. help to be sustainable yeah. should in case there is another lockdown which we have gone into the 2.0 lockdown do you know yeah. what I mean? yeah something pandemic proof and yeah. internet proof would be useful like that, definitely yeah <laughs> something that that you know can live through a, a pandemic but yeah multiple streams of income is 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 really really important but also because you asked me about my my uh tools and techniques that i use to pivot yeah. the the idea is also to have a spectrum of services as well i think mm -hmm. that's right really important a very basic service right up yeah. to you know a, like a platinum platinum standard service so that you're kind of you, you you're kind of many things to many people but you're still in the same realm if that makes sense so i offer the mentoring the coaching the training courses online training courses and bespoke but also I offer one-to-one -one consulting and hands-on practical support as well. So, but it's all within the event space. And then the other other streams of income, yes, is my lecturing. My lecturing is what saved me during the yeah. lockdown. But that all that just comes from me wanting to just diversify my skills as well. I think you have to. Um, you can't do one thing. It's good to do one thing and get good at it, but it's good to also develop um not not sort of other 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 skills that are related to what you do so that yeah. they kind of sit on top so the Absolutely. lecturing and the teaching is also an aspect and then the the retreats again back to organizing but it kind of fits into my kind of yoga and well-being and wellness um business but yeah i think the multiple streams of income is the way to go definitely Absolutely. Indeed, I definitely concur with that. Um, I'm just looking at the comment section. We've got some few questions um, from our viewers. I'm just going to post one up so you can have a look at it. Um, this um, conversation has actually struck a chord with one of our listeners. Um, yeah. She says, I have an event coming up next year, January. Um, due to the topic of the event, I feel that face-to-face -face would be most ideal but the current situation of COVID-19, um, I'm not sure what platform would be ideal. So she just wanted um, some clarity in terms of what to do with this yeah. event for next year. Yeah, so yeah, if it's in, when was it? Was it January? Um, yeah, yeah, January. January Depends yeah. on where in the world, because various different regions have different, um, uh, we're at different stages. So Europe, obviously, if that's in January, it's going to have to be online. Um, but we, you, we, you probably can have sort of some smaller events because we'll have a, we'll have a vaccine by then. But yeah, it's probably going to be online probably until maybe the summer next year, I'd say. But the Middle East and Asia are, are running live events, so it really does de depend on where you are. Um, oh, in terms of an online platform, there are loads, so it's okay. a little bit like looking for a venue. There's lots of choice out there and then throughout the lockdown that's really expanded think about what it is that you want the event to do so yeah. um i actually if she if if they download that grid um mm. or maybe email me and then i can send them the grid that will give them a really good starting point as to sort of what is it that they want because i've done the grid according to um the type of event that it is so is it a networking event is yes. it a conference um where you you want is it like a is it about just giving information so it's very one way so sort of like a broadcast style um is it do, do you need to have interaction so is it sort of a workshop style so each different element of your event will determine what type of platform you go for zoom can go quite a long way 
So yeah. it's quite, you know, it's useful to not negate Zoom. Zoom has its good functionality, both the free model and the paid for model. So it might be worth paying a little bit extra to get the extra functionality. But there are also quite a few others that, that also work quite well. I mean, StreamYard's brilliant for broadcast style like this. But, you know, this platform is perfect for if you want to, yeah. to deliver an event that's like this. Um, but then if you want something that, you know, mirrors a live event a little bit more. So there's networking between the attendees, there's some interaction, there's sort of breakout rooms, then you sort of need to kind of go for something a little bit more sophisticated. So take a look at, and also it de depends on your budget as well. I mean, Zoom does breakout rooms as well. So it really mm -hmm. does depend. Yeah, it does depend. Um, um, sure. Yeah, have a look, do your research, have yeah. a little look have go for the demos if they you know ask for a demonstration to take up take a walk around the platform just like you would if you were looking for a venue contact them ask them for a demo and if you like the look and the feel of it and it's within your budget then go for it Brilliant. and also shop around and do a few like you would a, a venue <laughs> a live <laughs> venue <laughs> <laughs> she also she also said that it's in london actually that um it's in london and okay. um she said thank you for answering the question so i'm going to leave your email um yes. on the comment section that's okay yeah and she can so, email yeah. me no problem i can send her my grid and then she can okay. go from there yeah brilliant awesome and then someone said um lack of role models for young people um you know yeah. so many young people are not sure what to do after college after university What's your take on that in terms of any young person that is interested in actually going into event planning? Yeah, I mean, gosh, I'm a role model. I mean, the yeah, that's students, what you're here. especially <laughs> black students in my classes that sit on the front row when they see me for the first time. It's amazing <laughs> to get the reply because it's one, you rep run, you look like them um and to um you've got you're live you're you're in next you you're doing it now you're not like a lecturer who sort of left events 10 years ago you're talking about projects you're working on now yes. um so it's important for me to be a role model i'm always happy to transfer my skills that's what it's about transferring skills to the younger people because they're the ones that are going to develop the industry and make it uh, the wonderful sector that it is but yeah i think it's important for young people to always get experience try and get your arms around any kind of event you can whether it's through volunteering or whatever build a network get out and network and meet people use yeah. linkedin linkedin is a very powerful uh platform for finding people it's quite mature there are a lot of event leaders on there so if you want to get into the event industry start sort of connecting to people on linkedin and start building those relationships you know unfortunately we live in a world i say unfortunately that you know gives opportunities to people who they know and sometimes those people don't look like us so you know you have to kind of work quite hard to build up the relationships and get to know people and keep connected to yeah. people in the industry and then they'll open the doors for you but, but be 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 prepared to volunteer be proactive i think that's quite important for young people to be very proactive and 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 offer yourself to be you know the students that i've worked with they've approached me and said i, I really want to work with you can i help and mm. so i'll give them different events to do you know i'll think about giving them something that i know that they can get their arms around and it's going to look good on their cv so that they can say that they've managed to deliver something from start to finish so it's important to get that hands-on experience so absolutely so it's like a form of sort of work experience yes and, um, yeah teaching them and guiding yeah, them events is, a like events is a practice it's a practical field so yeah. you know you need to be able to demonstrate that you you've done an event and you you understand the mechanics of of how an event comes together. So. Absolutely, you're definitely right. That's, um, I hope that answers your question. That's one of our viewers watching. Um, and also I wanted to know about, you know, um, your biggest challenge and what have you actually learned from that? 
my biggest challenge my biggest challenge is always being a black female in the events industry i could talk about all other things but i'm gonna be really candid and just say it like it is that's my <laughs> biggest challenge so uh n not being given opportunities when i know i'm overly fully, fully qualified um being undermined and kind of put into a box of yeah. really that i should be here when i should be here so i i basically create my own dialogue actually and, and work out what i want to do and what i can do and go for those clients that i want and, and where i am at the moment as you, you said many times 20 years in the industry that really makes you check yourself as to sort of what you will tolerate and what you um really where you're aiming and where you're going and what you're what you're going to how you're going to apply your skills so i mean in the last sort of um eight years i've been doing e e events and conferences on the african continent and developed the passion for driving the economic development of it yeah. bilateral trade and poverty alleviation job creation all of these things to help the continent to become the powerhouse that it needs to be in the next in in the next 10 years um so the events can do that they're very powerful and um yeah. i've learned that 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 you've got events at all different levels and it, it positioned well events can do that so that's where i'm at really i'm at the pro in the process of talking to different Afri different departments in african governments and that's where i'm going fantastic i really love that i know that you've written a book and i just want to know about it you're a publisher you're an author um tell us about your book Oh, so, okay, so my most recent book, a contributing author to um, a book called Managing Events, which is a book by my colleague, uh, Liz Quick, from uh, University of West London. So that was published last month. Um, and so that's out. And I was contributed sort of a, 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 a chapter in that book. But my own published book is uh, Toolkit for Successful Events Management. I uh, published that quite some time ago now, but it was a basic book, a practical book for um, those that are starting out in events management and want to know the basics, basically. It's essentially what all of my basic courses cover and largely um, the degree courses as well. So anything from looking for venues. So some of the questions you've asked me today, the answers are in there. How to go about a venue search, effective venue, venue finding, how to craft a budget from scratch. Um, so yeah, the basics of event management. So it's on Amazon, you can get it. So it's called Toolkit, Toolkit for Successful Events Management. And yeah, if you want to start out in events, it's a, it's a really good practical book, definitely. Mm, fantastic, that sounds awesome. I'm going to leave the link there as well okay. um, for them to be able to get that book. Let me see. And um, you might have to send me the link of the Amazon. Um, okay. I will do. Toolkit for successful events well. management. Yeah, indeed. Um, I was going to actually ask you about, um, you know, what advice would you actually give anyone who actually wants to do what you're doing, um, start off in event industry? What, what, what advice would you actually give them? Oh, OK. So it depends on where you're coming from, as in whether mm -hmm. you've got some experience, whether you're you, with some experience, a little bit older, maybe switching from a different career or whether you're you're, you're younger. Um, if you're younger and you've got more time ahead of you, then it's probably useful to do a degree or some kind of professional um a, a course um, experience is always going to be a winner so it doesn't even matter if you don't have a degree the experience is what's going to count um, so I would advise this a little bit what I alluded to earlier is 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 trying to get the work experience um, so, and, and and if wedding planning is what you want to do then try and get some experience around sort of wedding planning or wedding design or venue design or venue decoration depends on what you want to do or if it's the corporate world slightly harder to get into but yeah again try and get you know even if it's sort of a charity fundraiser or uh, a community event that you can help to run because it actually as you very well know and it really doesn't yeah. matter what kind mm -hmm. of event it is the process is exactly the same 
Exactly. You have to look for a venue. You need yeah. to market the event to get the delegates to come. You, you may need to kind of fund the event somehow with either sponsorship or delegate revenue. So there's money to be made or money money to be collected. You need to have some kind of registration process and you need to have some kind of program or experience or whatever it is that they're going to do when they get there. And then you need to run the thing. So, you know, there's a process to, to what we're, and that can be a wedding or an exhibition or, you know, the, the, the nuances are different, um, but the, the process is exactly the same. So okay. it's important to nail the process depending on what your what event you're doing, but understand it. Understanding yeah. the process is, is key. So that was one of the things with the students, especially the first years, they were kind of stunned and you could see their brains ticking away processing that that actually it is a process event is event management is a process uh, whether it's design early on stage or or later in the, in the planning and the delivery the, the, the design process is also a process so you, you have to take certain steps in order to arrive where you need to arrive everything's a process isn't it in yes, life so even yes. even creating is a process design yeah. is a process if you're designing a dress or or making a dress or making a song it's still a process every a process underpins everything so i would say yeah get some experience write it down um in terms of recording what you've done um i've helped i've looked at people's cvs and things like that and help them draw out you know what is it that they did at the event be really really clear about your what your role was and then what you did to enhance the event as well so were you on registration were you in customer service did you did you liaise with stakeholders did you do administration what is it that you did and get that down on your cv who is it that you worked for who were the stakeholders who attended was it senior management was it community leaders um was it um, was it a faith style event what was it so you also yeah. underpin try and get a way of describing what the event was oh a tip actually in helping to describe an event is an academic way of thinking here it's five w's that's how we describe an event five w what was it where was it who was it for why did you do it and yeah. i forget the other w it's five w's anyway and if you can answer all those questions then essentially you have your the description of your event fantastic so practical experience is, is is underpins everything really Indeed, indeed, absolutely. So, you know, Michelle, um, you must have some amazing role models. So please tell us about maybe two people <laughs> that's most influential to you. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, two people, only two. Only two. <laughs> <laughs> Two oh, people that's most influential to me. Uh, okay, role models. Okay, so uh, my grandmother, unfortunately, she passed away when I was a child and I was 16. So I would have to say that she's a role model because I, co I do constantly refer to uh, things that she's taught me and principles I live by, values, this kind of thing. She's a Caribbean caribbean grandmother so i can see m m many of your audiences um nodding in approval or Af africans cat we're all the same uh yeah. elders uh, my elder grandmother instilled discipline values um just who i am really i'm, I'm, I'm the fiber of my being she's she's the one who who instilled that within me so that's just, this is someone in my family um my husband is an amazing role model because he's a role model for co of constant learning. He yeah. is a walking dictionary when it comes to information. Um, yeah. So he's uh, he 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 reads so much and knows quite a lot about a lot of things. <laughs> I thought I knew a lot, but he knows a lot as well. Uh, my husband. Uh, can I just add one more? Michelle Obama. If I'm going to drop names <laughs> of people who are. Yeah. you know in the public domain i mean you don't know my husband or my grandmother but, but i'll drop in someone that you do know michelle obama is a is a huge role model for me because she's a black woman that i look at and i automatically know what i should be doing mm -hmm. and i think that's what a role model should do you 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 know there's that clarity there there's a transparency about 
what she lives, how she lives, you know, her her and um, the, the Obamas are a real strong role model for me. Fantastic. That's amazing. I love the role models, um, family members and also someone who is a high influential person. Mm -hmm. um, that's really amazing. Someone wanted to know whether you run workshops. So what I've done is actually leave your email address and also your websites. Um, I'm sure you do run some workshops and this is actually geared to young people. Um, I know you work with both adults and young people because you're teaching, you're a lecturer in, in a university. Yes. Put your contact details there. Um, oh my goodness, you know, it's such a it's such an amazing pleasure having you. We can talk all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, it's been amazing. I've had a really good time. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Indeed. Um, you know, any lasting message of encouragement to our listeners and our viewers? Um, anything positive that you want to share with them? Um, you know, over to you, Michelle. Yeah, I think, you know, with any, anything entrepreneurs, I tell my stepsons this all the time, you have to start now, you know, don't leave it. If you want to start a business, start it. Uh, yeah. Don't wait. Um, do your research. You know, we fail so many times as entrepreneurs. Or we do so many things that don't work. Yeah. Um, nobody tells you that. <laughs> <laughs> but there are, we we fail a lot if you if you if you um listen to you know some of the people like dyson and branson and people like that they'll tell you that they have lost a lot of money from previous ventures before um the venture that they they did that that took off that you know that that also meant that we know who they are now so you've got to try be prepared to fail um not everything is going to work but learn fr learn lessons from the failures oh and God. build on and build on those lessons so don't just be blind and uh, get things wrong and yeah. you know and you know and and it not working but make build that into the next stage of of, of the success because it will come uh, and you also have to just keep going, get the motivation, have your daily uh, rituals, things that keep you motivated. Um, and yeah, you've got to manage your life in terms of um, keeping going, um, being balanced, uh, keeping happy, mm. you know your tribe. I mean, you're on the right, you're in the right space here. We all women's network, knowing your tribe, the, the people, the company that you keep, people who motivate you and keep you, um, keep you strong and keep you sane. So whether that's family, friends, etc., work colleagues or whatever, just, just keep going, keep pushing and you get there. You do. Absolutely. Lovely, lovely message. I really love that. Thank you so much. And I know that you have an amazing um, giveaway. Um, thank you so much for sponsoring today's podcast. Um, we always have a, you know, an amazing giveaway. Last time we had um, four weeks of free coaching for one of our listeners. And mm. uh, so today, um, Michelle is going to be sharing a giveaway with us. Um, over to you, Michelle. So discovery call is always good. So if yeah. anyone wants to contact me, especially you sound like you've got quite a lot of young people on the on the um, on the webinar today. So feel yeah. feel free to reach out to me. I am, you know, uh, reach out to me and drop me an email. I'm ha more than happy to um, give advice on, you know, yeah, anything. Yeah, whether you want me to have a look at your CV or you want you, you know, I'm always doing it for students. So feel free. Discovery calls are good. I don't mind. Fantastic. Yeah. You've heard it here first. Michelle is offering a discovery call for anyone who's actually interested to just have a chat about where they're heading in terms of, you know, their career, where there is actually an event um, planning. She's able to actually guide you and help you to actually navigate a lot better. So um, fantastic. It's been such an amazing podcast. It's like we've known each other for years. <laughs> um, honestly, I mean, <laughs> how did you find the whole podcast process? And obviously the communications with me um, over the period of few weeks until this final day. Seamless. I can see that you're a pro. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> nothing more to be added no you got me really excited and uh, no so, and that's all part of it isn't it because yeah you know you, you 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 know you gave me quite a lot of guidance a lot of ideas you know you had a ton of questions you know <laughs> so yeah yeah it's good because it, you're supposed to get excited about being interviewed because you know mm -hmm. i'm in my room you know it's <laughs> it's not as exciting anymore because you can't go anywhere so it's got to be you know what I mean the whole experience has got to be that much more engaging so no it was lovely really enjoyed it honestly it's been a pleasure having you Michelle um thank you so much for those amazing nuggets you've actually shared with many of our listeners and all our viewers today um you've answered their questions really nice and eloquently you are a queen and I salute you. I just Aww. want to commend you for all the things that you're doing. <laughs> and also the big news for next year, 2021. Please share it. I mean, this is how I actually saw you on this. Is that day. how you met me? Yeah. Also, I am yeah, working with uh, the Economist Group with uh, who are organizing a conference called the Global Business Forum Africa, which mm. is a conference that's owned by the Dubai Chamber of Commerce so it's in Dubai next year it's a yeah. bilateral trade conference so it, it engages heads of states from different African countries and the purpose of the event is to boost uh, trade multi or bilateral trade between the UAE and Dubai Middle East and the African continent so it's very timely because uh, the African Free Trade Continental Agreement has just been signed, which is the equivalent of the European Union for Africa. Uh, so essentially any, any, any country that wants to trade with Africa is trading with one unit as opposed to 54 units. So it's an amazing um, milestone for the continent in terms of um, access to that, that, that region. And it's an exciting project to be a part of. Yeah. That sounds so good. I want to definitely be part of it. Let me know what help you need. I'm your girl. I'm here. <laughs> every little help <laughs> indeed indeed thank you so much for having me and i'd keep me keep me do add me to your um your you know communication so it'd be nice to attend your events once you once we all can become face to face again um, I mean, I'll <laughs> next year we're having our networking event next year starting from january um so i'll definitely <clears throat> send you an invite yes for sure. sounds good nice for you to come along and meet the women as well and they will also be able to meet you and have a chat as well um you know what it's been a real pleasure having you here michelle every great things must come to an end and and um, I just want to say thank you so much for being part of the Birth Your Vision podcast. This is where we actually create a platform for female entrepreneurs and women in business for them to actually take us on a journey of birthing their vision and bringing it to life, to reality. And that's what you've done within 20 years. You're now here teaching, lecturing, um, you know, different people from young to adults. And you're sharing that. That is amazing. And that is how you'll be able to bless so many and make an impact impact and I'm so happy that you've been on this platform to be able to share that so I want to say thank you to you Michelle it's a pleasure to have you here and also to the wonderful viewers and all the supporters I want to say thank you so much and I want to wish you a very merry festive season and also use this opportunity to actually invite you all to our end of year gratitude party is taking place online via zoom <laughs> on the 18th at 7.30. All the links will be in the description bar below. So please access it and come along and join us. Let's have some fun, some great challenges, share all our um, goals and visions for 2021, um, reset our mind and also have fun, relax and have a chilled um, time, you know, in the comfort of our home. So come along and join us on the 18th. And I hope, Michelle, you can actually make it. I'm going to send you a link. It'll be nice to see you there. Yeah. Uh, yes. Good fantastic and also thank you so much for all of you who who has actually been taking part in the 21 um day of gratitude 31 days of gratitude um, um it's an amazing um gratitude thing that i've actually started since last week posting each day about gratitude being thankful for what we have 
because obviously it's been a very tough challenging year for so many people but at the end of the day it's all about having an attitude of gratitude and it's 31 days of gratitude challenge on the birth your vision facebook podcast page so if you want to join us come along the links will be there in the description bar so until next week Thank you so much for tuning in. Keep supporting and keep encouraging. I'm your host. Um, stay blessed. Have a great evening. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to my wonderful guest. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you're truly welcome. And for those of you who wants to um, connect with me online, I have just um, placed my contacts. You can actually get in touch with me via email or LinkedIn or even on Facebook. So thank you so much to all our viewers. Have a great evening. I will see you next week with another amazing guest. Thank you so much. Have a great festive season. Stay blessed. Thank you. Bye. Bye.